Welcome to Old School DM, uh, building together uh, online stream thingy, uh, which doesn't really have a name or a purpose yet. I just <laughs> want to socialize online. Uh, today with me, I have P. Ball. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. Um, so I'm P. Ball. Uh, I am from PayPal Kami. That's my patron. And I build paper terrain as well. Uh, I mean, I just sign it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, oh, that picture is just <laughs> from yesterday. I was yeah. trying to do something, you know, different. You know, I, I, I like it. so <laughs> it's, it's all about building. This isn't about, uh, there are a lot of great crafting channels that are like, do this technique and everything. Um, mm -hmm. And this thing is more about, let's just do it and see what, see what happens. Uh, <laughs> so my first one, I was building this little pop-up uh, thing that goes with the farmhouse. And uh, the roof didn't really turn out right, but it was working through that process is part of what I'm trying to capture here and working with other people and finding out what their techniques are as we go together. Uh, we had a third person that was definitely going to come on and they, they had to miss today. So uh, I'm glad to have you here with me. Uh, I only do this because I can get people on, online to do it with me. Um, <laughs> I would not just, rec I, I've recorded a few technique videos before. They always feel really awkward and unnatural for me. <laughs> Yeah, like you try to be so um, well spoken and correct that you lose all the natural part, right? Yeah. When whenever no, I just you want to have fun building stuff together. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have anything new coming out soon? Uh, um. So I just stopped. Uh, I just stopped. Uh, the poll just came out, and I'm going to build a uh, therm room. And that's going to be very interesting because I have no idea what I'm going to do. I mean, I have a slight idea, but, you know, apart from the very basic uh, room with a throne, uh, I also need to come up with something more interesting because I don't like, you know, just doing a room and two furniture, <laughs> like two pieces. Right. Right. It has to be like a whole set. So, yeah, I, I'm still trying to figure out what to do. I'm thinking like... Uh, a dinner table, kind of like if the players are asked to stay for dinner, it would be like a very luxurious dinner or something like that. So, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of scenes like that, and I run Dungeons and Dragons, and there are a lot of scenes where, uh, you know, a royal or an officer has people in, and uh, one of the famous ones is Ravenloft. There's uh, over and over mm -hmm. your stories about Count Strahd inviting people into his castle, and there's a big dining area. So that sounds pretty cool. Uh, that sounds like a really cool setup. Um, so today I'm going to build out a brand new thing that just came out. So I'm still working on filling out my box here of uh, the, uh, the little farmhouse. Uh, last time I built a little pop-up, uh, this little pop-up uh, add-on, which is this pop-up house. So just, you just stick it on the edge of the house. Um, oh, yeah, and this time uh, he just released a new fireplace. Let me put up the kit here. Oh, right. I saw it. It just came it, out it's yesterday. So nice. I love the copper effect. Yeah. It, oh, I love the copper effect as well. I just I just fell in love with it. Um, oh, yes, it's amazing. And because uh, I asked him, I built this version of the house right here. This is my pop up version of his house. Switch back. Um, I'll put this on the camera here so you can see from the top. So I've got the pop up roof. And um, if we look at this close camera here, you can see it from the table level. Um, <laughs> and I did this thing I showed last time where I put a little clip on the fireplace so I can just slide it in on the end here, like that, in the fireplace. But the problem is the interior doesn't have a texture for the fireplace. And I, I mentioned this to the designer, Chris. And he went off and he does this thing on his thing for, for $1. His, uh, his uh, Patreon for $1, you get these things called basic bits where he keeps making props. And that fireplace one I have cut out here. But I'm doing something special with it today. I've cut out a transparent piece, a piece uh, so that I can build um, an open fireplace. Oh, nice. uh, so the advanced one comes with two pieces, 
and I just did one with my cutter. So uh, this is my plug for having a smart cutter because I don't know if you can see the zillion little holes. Let me back that with something <laughs> dark. Yeah, I need one of those. Yeah. So you can see with the camera close all the little holes between the threads uh, all the way through. Uh, you don't want to cut those by hand oh. unless you really know what you're doing, and I don't. I'm a klutz. Uh, <laughs> but if, I, if it weren't already taken, I would take the Lazy DM uh, as a title. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I wanted to share one technique right away. When I got this model out to show it today, um, I, I found that the both side has this problem, which I mentioned before, that if you have too many layers, and I have these layers, interior and stuff like this, when you fold it flat, sometimes you can get uh, stress on the seam, and it causes ripping. Mm. You then get a good, you see the white there? Yeah. And it's split. That's really frustrating. Um, <laughs> uh, and mm. I mentioned last time uh, talking about um, reinforcing, which I did not do on this piece, like I should have. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to uh, use it to talk right away about my favorite thing, your favorite thing, edging. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Patty, do you have anything you want to share about how you do edging? Uh, so my first attempt was with a Sharpie, and it was the worst thing ever because it bleeds like, uh, you know, like no tomorrow, that, that thing. Yeah. So... I, uh, what's the word? Uh, luckily, I have like this semi metallic uh, markers I bought at Miniso. It's like a dollar store, Japanese dollar store over here. Uh -huh. And they're water based and they're basically like, um, like they don't smudge and they are like, you can cover black uh paper with them and stuff so they're basically for a scrapbooking oh they're eight they're, they're, they're opaque yeah oh that's really cool i don't have any so opaque the, pens but i so, use a lot of black paper so that's pretty cool yeah like uh this have have been so far the best ones because they don't bleed and they're very like the tip is kind of thick and thin and different parts so it's very easy to like maneuver okay and i mean i have this gold pink and i love it because i i like pink sometimes <laughs> and uh you know edging things with pink i think it's super cute and it works a lot with the wood textures i make because they're like pinkish right. so yeah like here it's like etched with that, that and i mean it's good. not super perfect it's <laughs> it's not seamless but it's it's pretty like straight in the edge instead of you know smearing all over. So, so what do you use for uh, for scoring and fold lines? I use I use uh, the pending because it's like if it's like a fold down, it's going to be the the knife. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be a fold up, I use the this pen that is like already like it it has no ink. And so you do embossing with very, a dead very... pen, yeah. I mm -hmm. like embossing. Uh, I have little tools that do something similar. I don't need a pen. Uh, but yeah, that's a technique uh, that always needs to be shared, is keep a dead pen as your uh, emboss holder. Um, that's cool. Uh, and and I ask, I'm starting to yeah. ask all these questions of all the crafters that come online, because everyone does something a little different. And if I didn't, I wouldn't have learned about cool your cool <laughs> opaque pens. Um, <laughs> also, I wanted to share uh, something. Yeah, about, they're like all uh, over the place. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's different. And that's why it's really cool. And that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. I want to do it together. So uh, I, I love this little house. It's a two, uh, three by five inches on the bottom. And the problem mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. uh, I want something that matches the fireplace on the back. So it, I, I, I'm kind of like, I like the interior to match the exterior. And right now it doesn't. And so I mentioned the fireplace, and I try. I had the reason I was frustrated is I had tried some other fireplaces, like this one is from Fat Dragon Games. But if you can look mm -hmm. on the camera above, uh, it's actually bigger than the interior of the house. Um, 
you know, on the shelf. Mm. It's like, this is not good. Here, you know what? I can just pick up this thing. It's just like, wait, that's way too big, right? For scale. Yeah, it's too big. And there, I have some beautiful ones. Like this one is really cool from Ednick. It's also got a hollow interior. Uh, but it is also, yeah. it's the wrong theme. It looks like a dungeon. It's great for a dungeon thing or a haunted house. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have this one, which is probably my favorite hearth. Uh, it's three dimensional, it sinks in. Let me get back here so we get some focus. Um, it's got a fire in the back. It's got a nice lintel oh, nice. on the top. Uh, but this is, you know, this is for like a tavern or something. Just doesn't make sense in a little farmhouse. Uh, yeah, I feel like if you lit a fire good. in that thing in that house, it would burn up. I mean, it's so hot inside. Um, so what I really like is this model is going to be the perfect size to fit in there. Um, and so... It, you know, I have all these models, uh, and I like that they're all, you know, I put them in a box and I have all these different fireplaces, uh, but sometimes it's nice to have a little scale, small scale one, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to build this. Uh, if we're lucky, I'll figure out a way to wire it. I, I brought, you know, tea lights and things, and I've already peeled the light bulb out of a tea light, and we'll see what happens with that, because <laughs> this is... This is the point here. This isn't like, here's how to do it. It's like, let's figure out if we can do it. Uh, and maybe people will leave comments if they know good ways <laughs> to do that when I do it wrong. Yeah. Uh, but it's just to keep it I always comfort. try to tell my patrons. <laughs> I always say to say, tell my patrons to, you know, mix and match as they want or modify things. Um, I kind of like give them suggestions on how to customize them to their needs, but I think I've never seen anybody, you know, go too far away from the basic instructions. Well, a lot of times, it, it, your stuff is so amazingly uh, kawaii. It's all, it's all about being super cute. Um, and, you know, here I am fiddling with, oh, the fireplace is too big, I want a smaller fireplace. Um, whereas, your stuff is very expressive for a very specific kind of, uh, uh, you know, theme. Uh, there are a lot of mini makers who hang out with in the groups we hang out with, who uh, have very have monsters, famous, you know, uh, they do monster designs, and a lot of them are super cute monsters. You know, it's like a, here's a super cute <laughs> troll, and here's a super cute dryad, and here's a super cute this, and it, these, yeah. and they are really popular. I, I'm, yeah. not, but, but they won't fit in my house <laughs> from my universe. <laughs> no, definitely no. I was, I was thinking my fireplace won't fit your house. So I think it's even uh, very big. So it, it like, it, even outside of the style, it's very big. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's all, it's in it's, you know, it's not that they all have to work together. It's, you know, that people enjoy the things they're making and they put on their tables. Um, that's what it's all about for me. Um, so, um, are, do you have anything to build today, or are you just going to hang out and talk with me? Uh, just hang out and finish some textures I have pending. Cool. Yeah. So this is totally informal. I'm just going to talk to you as we do stuff. I'm going to share. I have some... my work at the same time. So what I'm showing, what I've got here on the big screen up there, is my cutting mat. From uh, I've got a Curio um, cutter from Silhouette, and it has a hard plastic support mat. It's kind of interesting here for the texture that you can see. It's got a big honeycomb on the back. Uh, this allows me to yeah. cut and emboss uh, as I go, and so I can fold and cut, which is really really nice because I just I just want to take <laughs> the pieces out. So this piece, when it came out, yeah. is already pre-embossed, so it has the fold places in it, so I can start folding right away, because it, it embosses the... Uh... I used to use um, uh, the perforation, That was the so it only had knives, and so what they did was they didn't have scoring, so the default uh, cut files people create to these things have dashed lines in them, and they cut dashed lines, and that way you get a fold, a fold point. So the problem with that is, uh, you've just created a perforation. 
And so if you put any stress on that, like my fold flat stuff, the next thing you know, where you glued something together, it's now ripped. It's perforated because it's a perforated line. Uh, and this is why I switched to only embossed so that I can, uh, well, and I'm also lazy because I don't like to edge more than I have to. And if I emboss, I don't have to edge, right? If I just fold it uh, on the fold lines without, without cutting at all. So I'm, I'm kind of odd in that I gave up the scoring technique and I use only the embossing technique now. Um, I don't ever, ever cut a fold line, even the surface. Um, and again, oh, I, it, it looks nicer because it doesn't leave the line, the white line. Yep. Yeah. So you can, you can see here, I don't, I don't have to, uh, edge that. And that leaves it up to the texture designer. If they, sometimes the texture designers put some stuff where that is. So it looks nice. Uh, and you don't have to, uh, use a high contrast color. You might do it anyway, because a lot of people like that strong outline effect. Uh, so this is not judgment. This is personal foot, uh, taste. Um, so uh, I wanted to show what I did with my cutter was I took the cut file that I used to cut those white things and I cut some um, black core car cardstock. I think it's called Black Canary or something. You can get it at uh, local uh, craft stores. And um, I changed all of the fold lines to be cut lines. Now I've just got little pieces that I can glue in the back. So here's the, and then I use this tool, which is a little spatula, and I can pull out the, the parts in the back. So instead of a fully folded piece, oh, this is interesting, this cut file doesn't, uh, the fold lines don't go all the way to the edge, so I'm getting a little perforation of it. It's all right. So here's the fireplace back which I'm going to glue on the inside for strength. So what I'm doing here is I just want to strengthen up the one uh, that's got um, a hole, but also the black is going to be the interior. So I don't have to do anything to the, uh, since it's going to have a hole, um, I want the back to be black, not white, because otherwise you have a hole where you want a fireplace and, and the fireplace is white on the inside. So I don't do that. Um, so I've just piece, basically created a black insert for every piece. And I got a whole bunch of black tabs. I'm not going to you know, insert tabs I don't need. Um, but cutters do it for free. <clears throat> yeah. And so it'll be the same thing for the little, the little grill work. Now this needs some of the holes punched out, so I'll need to use something pointy to do that with. <coughs> so this is really, really finicky uh, amount of detail, not required. I'm gonna also build the simple build box. Yep. One. This is just a box. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'll build it as we go. So how long have you been making paper craft? like terrain or whatever um terrain per se uh since november last year oh. but um like paper craft in general like since i was uh four. <laughs> oh yeah so, so yeah this is kind of a personal passion of yours yeah like i've always liked um arts and crafts and paper it's so you know easy to uh, transform into anything. So I always preferred paper and there was a time I was very into origami. So that also helped a lot uh, to reinforce my life for <laughs> paper. Like I, I go into stationary stores and I go crazy. I want everything. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. So has that been a problem? Uh, have you like me had a problem uh, with getting your fix because of the quarantine? Oh, um, so over here there aren't very like there aren't a lot of nice places to go for that uh, um like it's 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 not easy to get arts and craft stuff over here i mean there are like there's one special specialized uh store for arts and crafts 
That's uh, it's called actually Michael, but in, in Michael? Spanish. <laughs> Michael's in Spanish. Uh, Miguelito. Yeah, we have Michael's here. That's one of the ones. But does he have Miguel? It's called. And I don't know if it's from Michael's, but it's it's called like Michael Fantasies, but in Spanish. Over here. Oh, that's interesting. And yeah, and oh, the rest are like Office Depot and and things that are very like office oriented. Right. There is one that it's kind of like for paper and print, but like as uh, like Michael's or uh, there was one in California when I went, it was like Pi, Pi, I don't remember the, the name. It was like in uh, Greek, but it was like amazing. They had this very different types of paper uh, that that were like handmade. It was like, what, what is this? It was like a whole another level for me. So, uh, so where are you calling from? I'm sorry? Where are you calling from? Oh, Mexico, oh. Mexico City. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm in Oakland, California. Oh, nice. I'm just getting the uh, little pieces to glue into the inside of my fireplace here. Off my cutting board. I might trim them down a little bit so that um, they don't cause any stress. Now, this isn't going to be full flat or anything, so I don't have to worry about that too much. Because um, it's just going to be solid, a glued solid box. So even though I keep most, I, when I talk about full flat and I store things in a box like this, if it's a small piece, I just make the box and put it in with the rest, like the fireplace. Because <laughs> you know, I'm not obsessive about everything being full time just means can I store it in a box in a shelf uh rather yeah than... that's because all my other paper terrain is in a bunch of bins that are stacked up in a closet and each one of them has a little uh, dry packet you know those packets the silicon gel packets that like keep your food dry and stuff um no I don't know oh uh, so yeah so uh, how do you store there's your there's a truck coming by I'm gonna mute how do you how do you store your stuff to keep it dry? Um, so I put everything in a box and try to make it like fit, and that's it. <laughs> I don't have like a super big uh, amount of minis or, or stuff. Like I, most of my minis come from this uh, table. Uh, like board game I bought called um, Super Dungeon Explorer. Like oh, I bought yeah. it like four years ago, and I basically just use those <laughs> figures for everything. How do you store your paper? Oh, the paper. Um, I basically just uh, um, have it inside a, 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 a bag, and that's it. Like a Ziploc bag. Yeah, you don't put anything in there to keep it dry. You just no, because here it's it's a very dry. It's very dry. City uh huh. Yeah, that's lucky. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people in the United States who store paper crap have a real problem because they live in wet states, um, and it's um. very difficult for them to keep their stuff dry. And so you these people have, you know, and it's made of paper. Um, so people use various techniques. Uh, some try to spray it with a fixative. Um, others, uh, like me, I, I keep, uh, I try to keep, uh, well, actually, I probably have one in this box. I keep it with dry pack. I don't know if that's how it went. Yeah. This one doesn't. Well, see, that reminded me i got to put a dry pack in there. I don't know the one here. I store a lot of things in these uh, cigar boxes. Yeah, here we go. This is an example of a gel pack. This one I got, oh, okay. it's got Japanese or Chinese like writing we... on it. So, so it's probably from ramen or something. <laughs> so look at gel. Don't do not eat. Um, so that's one of the ways <laughs> I keep my stuff dry. Every container's got one of those in it, supposedly. So 
this is another uh, full flat model. A uh, vermin king was going to join us today. He can't make it, so he'll come on in a future episode, and I'll show you what that is. And I'll unpack that. So, um, one of the questions that came up last time is, uh, do you use a brayer or anything like that to roll your stuff flat? How do you flatten your stuff out to glue it? Oh, I have like a. <laughs> I have a Reporpus Fun Dance Roller for that. A what? <laughs> Special purpose. Okay. Um, okay. This. So oh, it's yeah, not for paper, prayer. it's for fondant, like pastries. Oh, okay. That's very cool. That's why I didn't understand. You said fondant. Yeah, like I never. <laughs> fondant, yeah. yeah. Like the, the cake. Covering yeah. that tastes tastes awful, but you yeah. can use it like play doh. That one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, clay tools are really uh, useful. Um, my color shaper, you'll see it get used right now. Uh, this is something called a color shaper. This is what I use to spread my glue with. Um, it's oh, a rubber nice. tip or uh, some kind of plastic, oh, and then it it has it's like a brush with no bristles, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. glue, the glue doesn't. Yeah, I have those two. <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you? So, is that how do you spread your glue? And what glue do you use? These are standard questions everyone uh, <laughs> Um. So, I usually use this glue that is like in a tube, and this is um contact glue. Okay. But since it's just uh, the tube, I sometimes can just like spray it directly on the tab and just paste it. But if for finer work, I usually use like a brush. But you know, I have to afterwards uh, leave it soaking for a while. But you know, I I do have those the, the same ones you you have, so I'm gonna use those <laughs> instead. Yeah, um, I, so I use, uh, as everyone knows by now, if they watch these things, I use uh, Scott Clear Glue with Applicator. It's a little wet, but I like that I can reposition stuff because I'm really, really bad at this. I'm really lazy. I still love it. <laughs> um, and I've learned some techniques to save my butt. And uh, <laughs> one of them is, so I use this spread out. So what I like to do is it just gets a nice wet layer. You can see it's shining in the light there. Mm -hmm. I spread the glue all out, then I can put it where it needs to be, and I get to reposition it, especially with these like multiple layer things I'm doing. I can check the layer on the front, and I can squeeze it around. Just I got like five, ten seconds to play with it, and then boom, I'm done. Oh, uh, I see. And uh, so that looks good. So oh, I'm realizing that these inner tabs are going to be exposed through there. I can see them. So I'm going to make sure those are black also. Mm. Um, so I'm going to glue in a lot of black. You can also, you know, do pen, uh, but I kind of like the extra strength because I'm putting it in a box so it'll get all crushed by things. Um, yeah. So I just like strengthening up these pieces if I can. So it's just kind of, I'm both lazy and not lazy, because lazy would just build the box and then mm -hmm. when it gets crushed, throw it away. I was like, no, no, I want it to look good, but I'm lazy. <laughs> it's efficient. Yeah. Everyone has, their own, <laughs> everyone has their own likes. It, you know, it took me a while to figure out what I liked and didn't like. Um, I really love a lot of the models people build like yours, uh, but I don't, you know, it won't match my theme. But when I want to build something for my granddaughters yeah, yeah. to play in, P-Mall buildings are the first things they're going to make. Because uh, your stuff just is, Aww. like I said, so cute. My granddaughters are going to love it. And uh, this throne room sounds amazing. I can't <laughs> wait. I, I think I am a patron, so I can't wait to, to see it and, uh, and get my hands on it. And when it's right, <laughs> yeah, and the, I, need a, I need a princess or, well, I guess whatever the story will be these days, it needs to be princess story. It could be rescue the prince story um, or something. Um, so one time I made like a super quick one shot and basically, well, it, it was going to be a quick one shot, 
but it ended up being something else. Like, uh -huh. um, it could be like, because it was too long after I was still young, like still very new to VMing. So uh -huh. I didn't know what, how, how little people can do in three hours. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. But, um, basically it was like, save the princess, but actually the princess was had like had talked to the dragons and was trying to help them, uh, you know, get kind of like, uh, one second, I'm trying to translate in my head. It's right. um, so, you know, how I, everybody was like, oh, dragons are evil, let's, let's kill them. Right. And the princess wanted to protect the dragons and right. tell the, dragon, the, the people that dragons aren't bad and you shouldn't kill them, right? Right. So she wasn't kidnapped. She actually ran away to help the dragons. Okay. And that was kind of like the twist. Yeah, and well, that's cool. You show I up and says, I'm not leaving. It. What are you doing here? How did that go? Um, they, like the the first uh, idea was that they they were going to go through four different castles of four different uh, types of dragons, uh, but they only made it to the first one, like the first dragons, the white dragons. So it didn't go very far <laughs> but at least they got to see the plot then like, right so did they did they encounter the fact she was friends with those dragons yet or did she not make it that far i mean when they arrived she was uh hum like hopping in the back of a dragon and looked at them and was very surprised and was like let's, let's get away from here and like yeah, what are you doing they flew away so they kind of knew that huh yeah i'm sorry <laughs> no go ahead i was so yeah they that. were <laughs> they knew that she was not there against her will, basically. Right. That was like the first uh, t tell. And in, in each castle, they would find new clues, right? Right. But they only made it to the first, and then we switched campaigns because, you know, people are like, yes, I can do, I can come every week, and they don't. <laughs> yeah. They start canceling, so. Yeah. That died. So there's a, a joke comic I saw on the internet where it says, it says uh, okay, you can have any wish you want. Uh, what do you wish for? And someone said, I wish for my <laughs> players to show up every week. And they said, I uh, wish for something else. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Anything else. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was the one with the dragon, right? Like, I want a purple dragon. Oh, ask for something else. Oh, I want my, my players to be able to be here weekly. What color do you want your dragon again? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, you've seen it. What color? Yeah, purple dragon. Oh, yeah. That's what, yeah. Very fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. The DM's dilemma. So what game do you play? You play 5e or something else? Uh, yeah, I started with 5e and I haven't dwelled into the earlier versions, but I wanted to uh, go with other systems, actually. Uh, I was about to play a game of Shadow of the Demon Lord, but then it happened. And I was so frustrated because I had the funniest character ever. I was going to be like this valley girl. <laughs> uh -huh. And she had a poodle, so it was perfect. Like, you know how you have to roll for, for your character in Shadow of the Demon Lord? I mean, I guess you can make it, but uh, you also have, can roll for it. Right. And I rolled everything that was necessary for the Valley Girl to, to exist. So <laughs> she actually had like this very little dog that bit everybody else. <laughs> and it was perfect, uh, but I didn't get to play it because the DM ditched us. Oh, so you still have that character though. It was legit roll, right? Yeah. Just got to find a DM. Yeah. <laughs> so do, you, do you play online or only in person or both? So that was going to be online. And I only play online now that you think about it. Because I do have a, a game with my boyfriend's cousins. cousins, uh, But they live in other states of the, of the country. So right. we can't really meet. So I have my first dilemma. I put the I put the inside on 
on this, which I'm actually pretty happy with. Uh, and so it's going to be black, except for uh, the tabs on the base. The base is not black. Uh, it's as normal. Uh, the white area is where you're going to glue your tabs because you're inside a box normally. Uh, and mm -hmm. in my case, I want that to be black instead of white. And I didn't print in advance. So a little bit of trimmy paper and boom, boom. <laughs> so I'm going to do is I'm going to do an odd assembly. <laughs> I'm going to uh, assemble this uh, and then cut a piece to cover the tabs when it's down there. So what I'm going to do is when I glue this in, I'm then going to cut a black piece to put over that, all that white. I'll just hand cut it and put it in. Uh, but this is the day, this is what kit bashing is. That's what this channel is, is about all the the stuff you compromises and the changes you make to make things your way. <laughs> uh, I don't actually care about the top though. The top uh, can be just this. So you have to help me decide. Am I going to do the wood mantle or the stone mantle for this house? Pick one. And then you can help me choose the, the brass or the copper uh, top. I'm, do one of them. Uh, I'm sorry. But this is like... <laughs> okay, it's <I'll> <laughs> delaying a bit. The, the, the which ones again? Co oh, I have copper and brass top. You know the lintel pieces above the mantle, and then I have a wood mantle and a stone. I uh, a uh, stone mantle and a wood mantle to choose. Oh. There, the colors will be better that way. Anyway, you can pick if you want. <laughs> Probably gonna make both. Uh... I think I like stone and brass. Stone and brass, yeah. The brass is subtle. I like it. The copper is really cool and bright. So I print on uh, opaque, this uh, 110 pound, 200, 199 GSM cheap paper you can get at local uh, Office Depot. Uh, so it's not the brightest stuff. It's not the shiniest stuff, but it's really sturdy. And uh, I like sturdy. What kind of paper do you prefer? Do you have a paper preference you like to build with? Uh, well, I use regular cars, cardstock, like a uh, white one. <laughs> and it's basically what I do because um, I don't want my uh, Patrons to spend like a lot of things on various different papers that they might not be able to find. So I try to make uh, make it as universal and um, inversion, uh, like the uh, 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 cheap inversion to start instead of something that would be more uh, specialized. So, so it's it, basically just card stock. <laughs> it's the same thing I use: index card uh, stock or cover card stock. 110 pound. Do you know the weights? Yeah. Is it 110, 199 GSM or something like that? It's, uh, I think it's 165. GSM? I think it's 165 GSM. Okay. That's a little lighter, but that's still a good, strong mm -hmm. card stock. Um, this is really interesting for your yeah, it's, it's nice and it's kind of flexible and if you paste two together it's super nice so if i need extra sturdiness i usually just make a back wall and it looks nicer too like for the outer walls i have this uh different colored pen for this because uh the brass is a very specific uh, i want to edge that's not i want it to match the brass better so if you have so anyone who's watching literally a black or gray pen is good for all purposes um but if you have the money or time or concern you can buy more colors i buy combo pens uh, my normal favorite is the 57 but this is the 9 uh, 77 which is kind of a works for uh, red woods and metals uh, you know copper and brass and stuff like that um, 
just going to edge a little more where I think it might get exposed. But um, yeah, so I, I always like to just to share what I'm doing and whatever else people are doing. Um, so where did you develop your 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 style? Um, is that always been how you like to draw things, or did you like survey the market and go, I want to do this? Or? I'm sorry, I don't have audio right now. Like I I can't hear you. Okay. I'm going. You just dropped two. Hopefully you will reconnect. Welcome back. We will move ahead while we wait. I need to move this down here.
welcome back. Technical difficulties <laughs> Hello. have been sorted. Uh, this is all right. It's all learning experience. So I really appreciate your participation. Um, while we were waiting for her to reconnect, uh, I put the back on some of these pieces, the, the base and the top. And I cut, as I told you I was going to do, I cut a little black piece to fit on the base. Uh, I'm trying to do it in, inverted in the camera is a little tricky, so that's going to go there. Uh, after the thing is just partially assembled, I'm going to drop the piece in. And so it's all black on the inside. It's all it's a lot of fiddly work for what's going to, in a minute, I'm going to glue this box together and I'll be done. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's a kid bashing channel. It's about learning how to figure out how to make things your way. So, uh, so you were, what were you speaking about? I've now forgotten. Do you remember? Mm. Sharing something. No. <laughs> I have a revised memory. Um, oh, I think cardstock. Uh, we were talking about paper in general. Okay. Oh yeah, we're talking about yeah cardstock. Um, yeah, so I like this uh, that yeah. you're you're trying to make sure that your uh, patrons build the right stuff. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't have patrons. <laughs> Oh, hello, we have a new visitor. Oh, <laughs> and he's wearing a mask. Yes. Oh, it's Eric. Eric, when, join us with your, turn your audio on mask. when you're ready. I believe this is Eric Squirmy Dad. <laughs> and turn on your mic, my friend. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's Squirmy Dad, but I... <laughs> I don't know if you can hear like a lot of birds outside my window. It's out, oh, and there's people now playing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Eric. It's interesting here in Mexico. I don't know. I, ha I have to mute. <laughs> can you hear that? Wow, that's cool. What is that? <laughs> So there are uh, musicians often playing outside here okay. in Mexico. They, with the quarantine, they've been going like more times around. Like every day, we have some new band, maybe two. Uh -huh. And you know, it's basically just uh, we're going to play. Please give us some money. And yes, at, at first it was like okay, that that's nice, and we gotta support you know uh, musicians. But now it's every day and. You know, you just run out of change. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's fascinating. Yeah, so I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we can hear from Eric now that uh, Patty has muted. Can you want to come in on audio there, Eric? If you can. I can, but I'm at work, so I kind of okay. need to keep my mic turned off. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, then you can turn off. You'll come another day when you can visit. That's why you're wearing a mask, is because you're working. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm building. I'll just watch, watch, but if I have, have the mic on, on then uh, my boss will be going, oh, what's going on? What are you doing? Yes, got it. Got it. Thank you. Oh, well, I'm glad to have you here anyway. I'm building a kid bashed version of uh, Chris Papio Schnitzel's new fireplace for my uh, for my house, my little uh, two by th or three by five farmhouse that he's been putting out. Um, and I'm making it hollow. And I was thinking about electrifying it. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that this time. Uh, turns out making it hollow is taking a lot more work <laughs> than I expected. Um, but that's not unusual that it takes more than I expect. Um, so I'm gluing together pieces now and having to make sure they stay black and edge things. Um, if when the music stops, please rejoin us, Patty, since Eric is not going to be talking, and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time talking by myself. I'll even listen to Mexican street music if I have. Yeah. To. <laughs> I, I just um, I'm just worried if it's like too loud and you can't like. Think. Oh no. Uh, don't worry about it. Sometimes uh, that happens. Uh, I can edit the audio at the end. And it's like you can hear the music 
more than my voice later. Oh yeah, it's not been <laughs> that bad. Your voice is coming through. So Zoom, they do a lot of audio processing to make it so that it's not so bad. Um, all right, gluing on the back. So this is a little weird assembling the box without its bottom yet, but, uh, but I want to do that insert I was talking about. Um, so now I need some tweezers or something. Get in there and hold the tabs. So one of the disadvantages of to, to glue that takes out a while to set is sometimes, you know, I'm just going to do one piece at a time. Um, sometimes it's a little trickier to get it to, to stay adhered at first. Do you have any tips about glue? Do you use a lean's tacky glue? Yeah, uh, no, I, find I, that use, was... I use the Scotch uh, crafters glue, they call it. They just call it clear glue to it, but it's also their uh, paper, you know, what do they call it? Uh, scrapbooking glue, or I think. Paper crafters glue or something like that. I love it, but on occasion it has, every, every glue has its finickiness that I found. What do you use, Eric? Uh, I'm an Aleens fan. Yeah. I think it's praises now Will. for everybody so that people can. Really well for me, sets up real fast. Yeah, I like a few extra seconds to, to, to work my mistakes. <laughs> so uh, what's the properties of the glue? I'm not familiar with it. I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> okay, is it, I mean, is it clear or opaque? Um, it's white, so I can see where it's going, for one thing, and then it dries clear. So it, it, it looks. I was thinking chemical composition when you asked properties. Oh no, 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 I just meant you know, does it is it really wet? Is it, you know, what's what's a craft? What would a craft be? Um, more. It's, it's viscous, so it doesn't run all over the place. It's nice and thick. That's how I like it. This, this is also viscous, I like it. I don't know if you can eat it. <laughs> um, I have many artists in my family. Um, my daughter is a digital artist, uh, but went to, you know, to, to art school. Uh, my wife is a textile artist. My mother was a ceramic artist. And um, the stories I like to hear is about, um, you hear about all these stories about uh, they're talking about eating your materials. They eat a lot of their own materials by mistake. <laughs> Get stuff on their hands and ends up in their mouths. And <laughs> yeah, I do that when I'm painting a lot. Yeah? I will wet my paintbrushes on my tongue. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is, so there's some stories, apparently, of famous artists who died because of the composition of their um, paints because they would absorb them through their skin, either on their fingers or through their mouths or whatever. All right, so I built the box, the little box. I can actually do a size demo where I was talking about um, how big this is going to be. My other, I showed earlier, Eric, I showed earlier um, photos of all the fireplaces I have, and they're all too big. But that's way better in ratio. I'm very excited about this model it's much better <laughs> yeah you six dots <laughs> yeah it is uh it looks like it's an inch and a half by a half an inch uh in just the just the fireplace side now it's gonna be a little bigger when the base is on and the mantle is on um but yeah i'm pretty happy with that now i made that custom cutout and i now put it somewhere and i can't find it <laughs> So, do you guys? What do you guys do to keep from that happening in your uh, in your builds when you get things ready and then you can't find them? Oh, there we go. Do you, how do you keep your space? With you? I try. I try to get rid of the trash as soon as I make it. Like as as soon as something is not needed, I put it in here in my little like trash can I have here in my desk. Ah. So it's like, uh -huh, I, so I don't confuse one thing with another and put them like in front and to the right is like everything that needs to be built and the trash goes there and it's kind of like, you know, muscle memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same thing, except my stuff that 
is done is on my left. <laughs> the stuff that I'm, I haven't cut out yet is on my right. Okay. And then I have a trash can by the table. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not as good at that. I've got a giant paper recycling bin that's about two and a half feet tall and about 18 inches around, made of wood. And all my recycling goes in there, my cans. So, you know, it's, I, my office is normal. I'm not in my office now, I'm in my dining room. But uh, my workspace, uh, you know, all of the stuff from my house goes in there, bottles, cans, all that stuff. Uh, and, and so what happens is I just toss stuff off my right into that. And so what I end up with is most of it makes it into that bin, but a bunch of it ends up on the floor. So I might adopt you guys' technique there of having a little guy right there with a dedicated job of holding my paper until I can dump it into the big guy. Because I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. like claw crawling on the floor picking up all these bits. Some of them are sticky because they have blue <laughs> remnants on them and they stuck to the floor. Oh no! Uh, so it might see. Yeah, it's definitely I'm learning a game stuff. Changer. The reason I'm having this like stream thing is so that I can learn all this stuff from all these other crafters. Uh, I love the message boards. Uh, Eric, uh, for those who don't know, is the uh, owner operator of and and lead uh, moderator for Cardboard Warriors Pro Boards. That kind of. If I knew you were coming, Eric, it would have made a slide for you. Um, um, and. Uh, which is the community, which led to the community that led to this, and um, and I was going to say something, I've lost track and all those qualifiers. What were we just talking about? <laughs> oh, boards, oh, message boards. Yeah, before that. Uh, information, changing information between each other, yeah. tips from other creators. <laughs> well, that's all good. So we'll we'll go with that process. Oh yeah, yeah. So cardboard warriors. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for cardboard warriors, um, because I had I was trying to explore something. I got I started right away pretty quickly with a card cutter. I did a couple by hand, and I went, I'm not going to do this. And I read, read about this thing called generically called Robo Cutter. So that's what I did. I glued that in. So now it's black on the bottom. Yeah, that was the predecessor to Silhouette Studios. Yeah, and um, and craft uh, Robo. And I, in fact, I uh, my first uh, cutting mat for my first cutter, I put paper on it, and it cut, and I couldn't take the paper off. The, I didn't know that you had to condition the mats because the adhesive, the removable adhesive, is way too strong. Like the mat was felt like it was ruined. I was ripping the paper, and the whole layer of paper was still stuck to the bottom. And I posted that as my first post, or one of my very first posts on Cardboard Warriors. And that's where I met all these people giving great advice. And the reason I want to have these things is, uh, is this really is, you know, although you do it by yourself, it really is a community to help us teach us these techniques. Uh, we, we have YouTube and you can watch, like I said, you can watch people teach, teach you specific things. But if you have a, a specific instance of a problem, uh, it's a community that digs you out. And uh, that's how I learned, for example, to condition my mats. <laughs> so when I get a new mat, I take something, usually like a sweater or something, and I stick it to the mat, and then I pull it off. <laughs> and it's a dirty mat, but now the paper will come off. <laughs> you guys have any tips or techniques and things like that? I am really happy how this is turning out. I just wash it uh, with uh, warm soapy water the first time, which seems to get rid of uh, the excess glue. So uh, oh, I don't have a. I caught it. So <laughs> I, I still do it by hand. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what? Oh, so talk a little bit about hand cutting. You both. You also like hand cutting, right, Eric? That's your hand cutter. Yeah. Well. Sometimes it's faster for me. So, so talk about hand cutting. Both of you, I want to hear about your techniques and things you've learned. Well, um, I actually did a TikTok of this a bit ago. Um, when I did the tree's foliage, uh, you see how it's like all curves and everything? Uh, I was using, you know, hand scissors. And for hand scissors, I've discovered that a lot of people the, the way they cut is kind of like this. And uh, if I try to do this, I can't get the curves right. So what I do is I move the paper 
instead of the scissors. Oh, I, and that's you have like no idea how huge a tip that is. Because I'm going, I can't cut that with scissors. How would you do that? So, so yeah, you can hand scissors move the paper for complex shapes. That's an important lesson, and it's not intuitive. It's like peeling a banana. What's the right way to peel a banana? Anyway, Erko, you got any advice I'm about cutting? Zoom in before climb. Sorry. Ah, uh, got to get back to work. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Uh, uh, oh no. <laughs> so you did a TikTok about that? You said. Yeah, uh, it was. Um, Gone. I like you. You know how they are like five uh, seconds long maximum. Right. I took like half an hour to do that, <laughs> and the editing is so basic. It, I don't know how I took so long. <laughs> Um, but you, you just go move the paper, click, 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 something like that. I got to check it out. I'm not, I'm old and haven't learned TikTok yet. So, oh, uh, well, you can have text and, uh, you know, you, you, uh, record a portion and stop and it tells you, and, and it has like this little clips and you can only delete the last clip you, you took. Wow. So if you want to like. Yeah, if you want to like uh, edit it, like you don't like the first one, you're screwed already because you already made a one after that. So it would you would have to start all over again. Uh, it's it's super basic the the whole software. Let's call it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for it, it was basically just me, you know, showing scissors, putting the title how to cut correctly. Well, not right. correctly, but how I cut, right. and. Uh, and the, then it was just me showing how I move the paper instead of the scissors. Right. And just a little below, you know, saying that. And that was, you know, four seconds. And I took half an hour to do that. Yeah, because you had to do over and over and over again. Is that what, yeah, what kind of. Time? And, and check the, that the camera doesn't like blur out any the, the nowhere because it's it's with your phone right i think you can upload like a video that you already did i think that's but what a lot I... of popular people are doing probably huh mm -hmm. but i'm not very familiar with how to edit videos so tiktok is like like the most I've done in my life for video editing. Well, that's the point of an application like that is to get more people into putting videos on. It's kind of funny. Uh, years and years and years ago, there was a uh, first attempt at something which you, uh, which was limited time videos that a colleague of mine made back in. It's going to be like 2010, 2008, somewhere between 2008 and 2010. A guy named Beach made an online service uh, where all you could do was swap six-second videos, and uh, it didn't get anywhere. It's just amazing how many things I've seen done before, but it was just too early. Mm. Social networks really yeah, like, uh, caught like that. It's crazy. Yeah, like the the. the guy that I made Snapchat that was like, okay, you have, you can send pictures and they only last 10 seconds. And it's like, who's going to want that? <laughs> right. And it, it, it like skyrocketed, like it, everybody is using it. I mean, I think not anymore, but you know, it, in its time, it was very, very popular. Yeah. Well, there was a, in, in a world where there's too much uh, persistence, there's too much permanence is searchable. Everything is searchable in public. Um, you can understand mm -hmm. people going, hey, I just want to share silly, goofy things with my friends. And that was the thing. Snapchat was appealing to a different age audience than social media had been before. Mm -hmm. uh, and Instagram did its thing. Uh, yeah, I study that stuff in my normal career. Uh, I'm a social media guy. I think a researcher and developer. Uh, I don't want to talk about that in this channel. <laughs> I have another channel. If anyone really is interested, they should have socialmediaclarity.net and check out my podcast on the topic. All right, I'm just holding this thing together to glue together because the rest of it's just gluing boxes together. 
the hard part was, you know, making it so it could be hollow with black inside, like that. And uh, so now it's got a dimensional fireplace. And you really can't tell all that much different from this camera. But I am actually super happy with this. Um, this is an appeal I've made before to some designers, which is offer a texture for the back. And this could be a freestanding piece. Uh, and in fact, if I were really kit bashing this, you know, and for an important piece, I would literally uh, reprint the texture for the the brass here, and uh, take the wall texture from somewhere. Probably this. I would take this wall texture and put it on the back. So he carefully designed this to fit right there, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, this is the outside fireplace and the inside one, so they line up nicely. Um, so here's my kit bashed one in its place, like that. I think that turned out pretty great. Um, let me do a quick thing to see if I can do kind of an instant fireplace here. I have already wired up I don't know if I want it wired, but I have a couple of these light bulbs that are removed from T. Uh, you can take these, you can disassemble them. Uh, I think you can probably get these anywhere. They're flickering, flamey things. They're hard to see in this camera. Mm -hmm. but, um, fake uh, candles. Yeah, they're fake, fake tea lights. Fake tea candles, I think they're yeah, called. Yeah, tea lights. Uh -huh, tea lights, yeah. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've taken the wire out. This thing's overwired because I did this so that I could uh, take a picture. I, I wish Eric's were still here because he could tell us all about the upcoming contest hosted on Cardboard Warriors called uh, Paper Cuts. And my entry for this year, uh, I used these lights to, to light up the building. Um, you know what? I think I'll just leave that on and just no. clip it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, tape this down to it just for now to uh, to one of those tea light to the tea light so I can get in there like that. There we go. And I'm going to use some tape. I have black gorilla tape. I'm going to tape it in there and then drop it in and see what happens, how it looks. <laughs> this is about as happy as it gets. But this is kind of what I do if I'm going to take pictures uh, and I want it to look like the fireplace is lit. It's like, ooh! So, black tape glued to a light. <laughs> to a battery. Nice. And the question is, does it fit? <laughs> You could make like a hole in the brass section as well. Yeah, I could. Kind of to prepare. I could put the battery the there. Work. Yeah. But this is about as happy as you get. All right, the tape is the tape is making it too big. <laughs> Need to trim the tape. <laughs> oh, no, don't short. I think the battery's too much. <laughs> there we go. All right. I did manage to slip it in there. Um, but I need to do something more subtle. But I'm going to do a little odd thing here. I'm going to kill my lights so you can see the light.
And what I kind of like the most is isn't just the direct, but when you do it and you see the indirect, the light creeping out of the thing. Aww. Yeah, shift it a little bit. I love it. Camera. There we go. It, and it, that, I didn't even do anything like stick any cotton on there, which is a really good technique people use to get diffuser. Um, I actually have a loose diffuser somewhere. I don't think there's room for it in this model. Uh, but yeah, a diffuser. So this is fun. Oh, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I electrified it. So the battery <laughs> is as big as the, <laughs> the compartment <laughs> to put it in. Um, I'm gonna light, light myself back up again. I actually have some around here. And I'll leave the battery in there to take some final photos, uh, some beauty shots for the for the cover of the episode or something. Um, but I think we're gonna call that done. Do you have anything you would like to share before we wrap up? Um, well, uh, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Hang on, we'll put you back up since you're our visitor. Well, I'll put up two slides here. Uh, a reminder that this is the fireplace I modified. That is that. And you can go to Beautiful. Get to get that. And our visitor today was Patty <laughs> at Pmall Comics on Twitter. And her Patreon is Pat. Pepet. How do you pronounce that again? Uh, so I go with P PayPal Alchemy, like uh, just pay and al alchemy, like. Yeah. PayPal so, alchemy. Yeah, it's not... yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that makes sense. PayPal, PayPal, PayPal alchemy. Pay PayPal alchemy, yeah. <laughs> it reads really cool because it reads like paper alchemy. So yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Re reading it's like it sounds cool, but when you try to say it aloud, it's like. <laughs> Well, it doesn't roll out of the tongue so well. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, you can probably pronounce uh, this one. Maybe not just German. Pa to me, it, it looks like Papier Schnitzel. So. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. You're doing better than I am. So I'm embarrassed that I can't pronounce any of my guests or the kids' uh, names. Um, but yeah, I wanted to thank everyone who watches for watching and for you coming and for the surprise visit from <laughs> Eric you. Brown. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to build next. Uh, I think I've built all the things I'm going to build for this farmhouse series. Uh, so I'm looking forward to my next project and uh, more people are starting to show up. So thank you so much for coming because people have become more interested. And in, uh, here's what I learned. Use a calendar. So because people are from all across the world and they don't know when things start. <laughs> And then the calendaring software apparently yeah. takes care of all of these problems for us. Um, but thank yeah. you again. Yeah, and actually, like, uh, like Central Time, uh, I, I, I sometimes I'm Central Time, but sometimes aren't because uh, daylight savings time in Mexico it's like later. So right. it's, yeah, it's, so that's why calendaring software epic. does all that work. <laughs> in this place. But it's one hour off. Yeah, <laughs> but it's one hour off. Um, so thank you so much again uh, for joining me, Patty. And uh, although we don't have a recording of it, you were the first person to help me try to debug getting this working. So I really appreciate uh, your your uh, your participation and having you on. And um, I look forward to <laughs> your you. next hit. I'm going to be looking after that throne room uh, pretty hungrily because I I think I could run a one shot with a throne room. That just sounds totally cool. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell me your ideas if you want, so I can have a bit more, uh, you know, inspiration. So maybe, maybe I'll build your <laughs> throne room and we'll talk about how to play, what it, what it might make a great campaign or a great one shot for running with it. That would be fun. So let's, let's do that in the future. That Sometime after you get your kid out, we'll do one, you'll come back and uh, I will build it. Uh, you'll get the cringe at me building it because you'll notice I didn't read any of uh, Chris's instructions when I made my model today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, my instructions are kind of embedded in the paper, so oh, maybe that'd be it's good. a bit easier. To if I don't, you know, uh, don't edge them so I can't read them. Uh, but yeah, 
Um, thank you so much again for coming. It was really fun. I it's love like, doing this. I'm going to do it again. This is my instructions. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, oh, like that's cool. the instructions. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I think I've, I've got a couple right. of your kits and I look at them and they look really cool. All right, bye, Patty. Thanks. You. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> bye. Bye.